Hey there, this is Dr. Isaac coming at you from the Pain-Free Maverick. As always, bringing you Maverick solutions to help you eliminate your pain yourself at home. And today in this video, I want to talk to you about why your shoulder injury is not getting better on its own, even though you've rested it or exercised it, worked it out, and you've tried everything possible, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Actually, it's probably keeping you up at night. If that's you, this video is gonna totally help you out. So let's talk about your shoulder right now. I'm gonna show you the anatomy because I want you to really understand what's going on. Shoulder is the most complex joint in the body. It is made up of a ball and socket and there's muscles in the back that you've heard of called a rotator cuff. And those rotator cuff muscles, to me, I call it the transmission of the shoulder. So what does that mean? The transmission means that it holds the ball and socket together while you lift your arm up in different directions, behind your back, overhead, so that your shoulder stays in the same position and doesn't fall out of the socket, okay? Now, the rotator cuff do their job, but there are other muscles way up and down around the shoulder that stabilize the shoulder as well. One of them being on the scapula or wing bone over here, you may call it. There's a muscle over here called the serratus muscle that comes out by the ribs, comes around, and it holds, it basically hugs the shoulder bone against the rib cage so that when you push your arm out, like if you're doing a boxing position or a press position, it's holding that shoulder bone stuck in the socket. It is one of the most important muscles that's misunderstood in the fitness community and in the rehabilitation community. And I'm going to basically help you guys understand how important the muscles of the rib cage are and the muscles of the middle back are to the shoulder so that the shoulder stays in position. If those muscles don't have the electrical signal that is sending that electricity at the right time from these wires over here called the nerve endings, you can see those nerve endings in the neck where the, the head would sit over here and send electrical signals to the, to the neck and that neck would send electricity across these wires over here called the nerve uh, fibers and these are called peripheral nerves and the peripheral nerves go into each of these muscles and they activate those muscles at the right time with the exact amount of power to each muscle group so that the shoulder can do its job and move beautifully around and go into uh, movements of excessive speed or slowing down like when throwing a ball or throwing a punch in boxing or slowing yourself down from, from uh, hitting the ground if you're doing a push-up. The shoulder has to turn on and turn off those muscles super instantly um, in, in, in different types of patterns of, of lengthening or tightening of the muscles around the joint. Now, the reason that most people get shoulder problems is not because the shoulder is the problem, it's because they don't understand the mechanics that their body is built on. Now, let's, let's stop right there. I want you guys to do this with me right now. If you're watching this video and this is something that is uh, interesting to you, take your thumb, just do this for me, okay? Take your thumb with me and try to touch your thumb to your forearm. Now you can see I'm pressing my thumb with my other thumb and I'm trying to hyperextend my thumb and bring my thumb back to the forearm and force it back to the forearm like that. And you can see I can only take it that far or I feel a lot of pain in my thumb. Some of you may be able to do that and, be, and say, hey, I'm double jointed. I could take my thumb all the way back and and I won't feel any pain, okay? If that's you, I want you to understand something, that your shoulder is most likely what they call hypermobile. Hyper means too much mobility, which means the ball and socket that you saw before, the shoulder is moving too much in the socket, and that is a normal finding for you. Those are, that's the way you were born. You're hyper flexible, right? You may be the person that can um, pop all your joints in your body. You may be the person that can pop your shoulder in and out. You may be the person that when you go swimming, your shoulder kind of feels like it's popping out sometimes and it kind of goes back in. Or when you're playing volleyball, it feels like it's slipping out of place. That's the, the, that's the extreme version of hypermobility. But you may be also double jointed in other areas like your, like your fingers, like I said, elbows. Once you, this is a test of global hypermobility, meaning how your, your ligaments are throughout your whole body. Now, the shoulder 
is a, is a hypermobile joint to begin with. It's a, it, it has a very uh, looseness, uh, a big looseness to it to begin with. So can you imagine if you are built with ligaments that have more flexibility, that your ligaments hold your bone and your muscle, your bones to your bones, and they can, if they're just even a millimeter too loose, think of a rubber band that's been stretched out for too long. It doesn't have that like uh, recoil or sna ability to snap back. Those ligaments can not let the shoulder stay in the socket with these extreme motions. And guess what? You'll feel like a pinch or you'll feel like when you bring it behind your back, oh, it catches you or it's hard to reach all the way up. If you're a woman and you can't reach for your bra, it, it kind of pinches on you. That's called an impingement. Or if you're doing this, it catches you up here and then it feels a little bit better. Sometimes it may feel like it's slipping out of place when you're doing a bench press. All those things can be an indi indication that you're slightly hypermobile. The treatment for you, if you're hypermobile, is completely different than someone who has a very stiff shoulder. So someone who has a very stiff shoulder needs more mobility or loosening or massaging. Those people, you'll see these kind of devices on the internet, you know, deep muscle stimulators and you know, you're seeing people massaging their shoulder and, and just loosening up the pecs and all that kind of stuff. But that may, may, that may be the wrong exercise or wrong tool for you if you're hypermobile. If you're hypermobile, what you need, I'm gonna show you in my um, toolkit here, is you need to work on thoracic stability exercises, okay? So you need to get one of these bands. You could pick these up on Amazon cheap. Uh, they're all over the internet, right? But more importantly is you have to work on these exercises. And I'm gonna kind of turn around and show you is you're gonna be doing these accordions. You see that right there? So external rotation, which means taking your hand and kind of going out like that. And at the same time, squeezing your shoulder blades down and back. So pinching the shoulder blades down and back. Stay with me for a second. Thumbs up and out like that, pinching. Now, you would, if this was a wall, I'd put it on the wall and I would just climb the wall side to side, side to side, side to side. My elbow would be on the wall and I'm just gonna slide across that wall. So what that means is you're basically using the muscles that I was talking about in the beginning, which are called the scapular stabilizers or the wing bone stabilizers to hold those muscles, which I'll show you again, okay? To hold these, this bone, this wing bone against the rib cage so it doesn't slide around. Because once it's stable, and these muscles over here against the rib cage, the serratus anterior and the rhomboids and all these muscles over here that hold the wing bone down against the rib cage are nice and tight and strong. Even if you're hypermobile or loose jointed, you won't feel that slipping of the shoulder. The mechanics of the shoulder, the transmission of the shoulder, the rotator cuff won't work so hard to keep the shoulder in the socket and you won't feel that slipping. So you need a stability program. So if you're hypermobile or stiff jointed, you'll know by doing that one test that I showed you before, um, where you bring your thumb to your forearm and you can't, if you can't bring your thumb to your forearm or hyperextend your finger up like that and it feels tender and tight, like I am, I can only go that far and it kind of hurts, I'm most likely stiff jointed and you need more mobility, okay? So mobility, you can start mobility with this. Uh, one of these massage uh, guns or even a lacrosse ball, you can, you can um, pin the lacrosse ball and, and trap the muscles in here in the pec um, area, the muscles in the chest area tight, and then roll on that area. Or you can roll on the back muscles over here, which are called the deltoid muscles, and kind of loosen them up and then work on rotator cuff strength training, okay? So after you create mobility to the shoulder or loosening up of the shoulder, you can then work on strength training, which would be using bands to work on rotator cuff, uh, traditional rotator cuff um, rotation exercises like this. You can even do these kind of things over here. And this will help tremendously to strengthen the shoulder and, and, and work on the rotator cuff muscles after mobility. So again, um, if you're hypermobile or loose jointed, you'll have the symptoms of slipping in and out of the socket. It'll feel like um, maybe you've dislocated your shoulder in the past, not even knowing it, or it kind of felt like it popped in and out of place if you went skiing or snowboarding and fell down and kind of went back in place. Or when you throw a punch and you box or something like that, it feels like it's kind of shifting out of position. You need to be careful with the exercises that 
can um, harm you. I would watch out for anything where you can't see your hands in front of you. If you can't, my rule of thumb is if you can't see your fingers while you exercise your shoulders, you're doing something wrong if you're hypermobile. The next video, I'm gonna talk about hypermobility and give a whole program out of exercises that will help you heal your shoulder injury for the long term. I'm also going to uh, demonstrate proper sleeping positions if you're hypermobile. Give me some comments and maybe click the subscribe button below and the bell so that when I put out another video, uh, you'll know, okay? Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next video.